Hi everyone, it's Karen here. Welcome to a new year. Happy New Year to you all. I hope you've enjoyed the Christmas festivities. And today, it marks the start of a new creative challenge for Lavinia, which is Under the Moonlight. So here we have our lovely oracle stamp, Under the Moonlight, contemplating what her year ahead will bring. So, got forest creeper, the glow flowers to support the oracle. I'm using a mask for the background. The colours that I've created the background with. In brushos, purple, turquoise and a lazarin crimson. For my stamping, I'm using Versafine Clear Medieval Blue. I've also used a bit of wilted violet to create the glow. I'm going to be using some white acrylic paint for the splatters and I've got a fan brush, my number one brush and my white Sigma Ball pen which I've used around the glow flowers. I've coloured my flowers with my beautiful pastel pencils. So I'm using the watercolour card. We will get started. So we're going to start with our watercolour card. I've got an A6 size, which is an A4 cut in half and then cut in half again. I'm using 300 GSM hot pressed watercolour card. And the reason I'm doing hot pressed is because it gives you a smoother surface for stamping, but still gives you that watercolour card to enable the colours to run. First thing I'm going to do is wet this card generously with my spritzy bottle. Now the three colours of brushos that we're going to be using are a lazarin crimson, purple and turquoise. I'm going to start with my lazarin crimson. It's a beautifully vibrant pink. And if you watched my video last week, you saw me use my spritzy bottle to do this. And then I got smarter and I thought if I used my eyedropper, the brushes are less likely to fly everywhere. So I'm going to take my brush that's number one and just dip it into the water. You'll see me, I keep bringing my card back and forth. That's because I'm trying to get it out of the way of the brushes. So, because the colours that I'm using sit next to each other on the colour wheel, let me show you quickly, pink, purple, blue, they will blend harmoniously together. And you'll often find that if you stick to colours next to each other, they will blend. If you stick to colours on the opposite side of the colour wheel, you'll get more of a contrast. But I'm after a really soft look. I'm going to take turquoise next. And again with my little eyedropper, just dot a tiny bit of that water onto my mat. Clean my brush. Often when I'm working, I'll have two pots of water here, one for the darker colours and one for the lighter colours, despite my best efforts in trying to keep the <laughs> brushes away from the card. But it's OK. When it all runs together, we will get something quite beautiful, I hope. <laughs> So because I was chatting a bit, we've lost a bit of the water. It's not running as well, but that's OK. We just get our spritzy bottle and give it a bit of spritz to allow the blue to run into the card. This is a bit of a messy technique, but it's ever so much fun. I've got this fabulous new Lavinia mat. Actually, I love it. Look at it. You can wipe all of this up. 
and carry on. So now I'm going to take my purple. Again, quite a vibrant colour, this purple. And I'm going to wash that over the blue on my card. Look at those blues and purples just running together. Just gorgeous. Now, if you thought that your pink was too vibrant, just run some water over it and it softens it. Bearing in mind that when it dries, when we dry this whole piece, it is going to come up lighter than we're seeing it now anyway. So you can just play. Look, I'm just tapping it because I've got a bit more water on here now. The colours are running beautifully. Now, we've gone really purpley pink here and I want some blue in here. So I'm going to go back in with my turquoise. Give myself a tiny bit. I've probably got enough water here. As I said, because these colours all sit together on the colour wheel, they will blend really well together. There we go. I'm happier with that now. So I'll give that a blast with a heat gun and I'll come back to you. So before moving on, you want to make sure that it's completely dry all the way over. Now, I'm going to use my stamping platform to stamp the oracle just because it's a solid image, rather a big stamp. And I just want to make sure that I get a nice crisp image, particularly because we're stamping on watercolour card. I'm going to be using medieval blue here. It's a lovely sort of purpley blue. Just right for midnight or twilight. So I'm stamping her more or less in the centre of that card and giving it a good press down. 
and I am going to go over that again just because the centre of her wasn't as solid as I would like. Oh, look at my fingers. Nice and mucky. <laughs> it shows I'm enjoying my craft, hey? There we are. And then still using medieval blue, I'm going to stamp my glow flowers. They come in two in a set. I've got the larger one and the smaller one. And I'm just going to place them in and around the bottom of the card here. I'm going to start with a bigger one first. I'm going to stamp another large one on the other side. Different heights is always good. And I'm going to stamp a couple of these smaller ones in and around the bottom. Not all joined up, some separate from the others. I love these flowers, they're so interesting. And when we put a bit of colour on them, wow, they just pop. Okay, I'm gonna clean this up first. And now we're going to ground her. I'm going to be using my lovely pastel pencils. I've got the black. And I'm just going to do a bit of shading in and around the bottom, in and around her staff. Create a bit of a shade out. There we are, I'm happy with that. And now I'm gonna have fun coloring these glow flowers. I'm gonna be using two colors. I'm gonna be using this violet light and my white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna color very randomly, following the shape of these little balls in the flowers. Here and there, not every single one. We're going to do some with the violet and then shade the rest of it with the white. So you can see they're already starting to pop and you can see how not careful I'm being. Because of the detail that Tracy's created in these stamps, She's done a lot of the work for us, so we don't have to be too careful. So I'm going to speed this up while I go through. You can see what I've done there. I'm going to speed this up as I go through and colour all the flowers.
Then I'm going to take my moon mask and my wilted violet because this is under the moonlight. So I am going to create a bit of a glow around her. As she contemplates what the new year will bring for her. <laughs> and I hope for you all, it is a magical and wonderful year. So you just want a tiny bit of a glow there. Then I'm going to take my Forest Creeper again with my Medieval Blue. And I'm just going to create a bit of draper, drapery. Is that even a word in this context? I'm not sure. But anyway, I'm going to drape these in and around her. I love this stamp. It's so delicate. And you can use it both ways. You can use it going up or hanging down. I'm going to do one more. Someone asked me the other day, why do I turn my card when I'm stamping from the top? Just that it's easier to manoeuvre because trying to stamp like this is a bit more complicated. So this way I have a lot more control over how I'm stamping. And then last but not least, we're going to create some splatters, some white splatters. And I am going to use some white paint this is white acrylic paint. If you've got a Posca pen, that will do the trick as well. This does create a bit of a mess. Splatter-wise, I'm taking my fan brush here. You can see I just watered that paint down a little. And I'm holding this loosely in my hand while I create the splatters. Just gives it a bit more of a, a magical feel. Could be the night glow flowers. What are they? What are they? They are glow flies. That's the word I was looking for. Glow flies in the moonlight. And then using my wilted violet, I'm just going to create a bit of a glow, a bit of a frame around the edge of the card. I will just bring the whole thing together. I always find that by framing it with a dark colour, it brings the eye into the centre of the card. You can do this any which way you like. You can do rubbing it around as we often do. But I wanted to create quite a definite edge here. So that's why I'm pulling it just like that. So there we have her, the gorgeous oracle contemplating her year, planning, prepping. And so my wish for you is that you have a fabulously wonderful, abundant, joyful 2022. Thanks for watching and I'll be back again soon. Bye for now.